share my screen? Yeah, you can. Thank you. So where we left off at last week's meeting, um, we had talked about, I, I had shown some different options for the roof screen. And we had talked about looking at um, the wrought iron option and considering some patterns that may add some density to the screen to help obscure the, um, the roof units a little bit better. So Ken uh, was kind enough to work up a couple of options that are on my screen right now. So I'm starting with the overall front elevation so you can see the screen in context of the rest of the facade. Um, we had talked about roughly a four foot high screen and having it run the full length. Um, in a minute, I'll show why we cut it back a little bit. But first, what I want to do is zoom in on the existing wrought iron at the windows. So the pattern I had last week was similar to this without the center medallion and just a very basic top and bottom uh, rail. What Ken worked out is a variation on that. Can everybody see that clear enough? Yep. Okay. So what he did, and one of the reasons why he pulled it back from the edges a little bit, is lined up a center medallion with each window and equally spaced these panels. So the construction of this screen is again wrought iron, a square tube outer frame, and then these would be uh, wrought iron bars you know, probably half inch by inch flat stock um, with a little um, kind of, I don't know what to call it, but a, a circle, a ring where they intersect much like the same detail on the um, windows. This these panels could be perforated metal. They could be a wire mesh, you know, a, subsist, a substantial mesh, not like a window screen mesh, but something to give it a little bit of opacity and to help differentiate um, the, the three individual panels. What he looked at as alternatives or, or to expound on that design a little bit. He added a top rail detail. And here, these arcs would be flat stock, curved flat, you know, bent <laughs> flat stock, similar to the verticals. Um, so here, I'm going to switch over to an arrow. Um, this white space and this white space is open. This is the solid bar. In the center option, this is a solid piece. The center diamond and these two ovals would be a piece of cut formed metal steel and the same for these instead of having the um, stock bar arcs it would be a piece of metal cut on a water jet or a laser or something like that so the what you see hatched in is the solid piece and these this is open to beyond and then this last option he reverses that so these are, these here the arcs are a solid piece. 
and where you see the white space is open, you're, you can see through it. And again, the center diamond and the two ovals are solid pieces. The screen stays the same, the, um, the verticals and the rings stay the same. So these are some options that um, give it some character, connect it to the building uh, a little bit better. And one of the reasons we pulled it in, aside from the symmetry, you know, uh, aligning the symmetry to the windows, is that you're going to need to have this set back from the edge anyway. And it, it would also be set back from this edge, the front edge as well, maybe a foot or so back. It would not be right up against the edge of the building. Um, but doing this allows us to return an equal width panel back to give it stability. So when you see it from the sidewalk, when you see this edge, you would see um, like the corner of a square. It would look like it's a square, but it's only two sides actually. So it gives it some substance and um, some depth to it. And the, the return also um, adds to the stability of the, of the screen as well um, in terms of lateral forces. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, can I, am I muted? No, I'm not muted. No, you're do, good. Do you think, um, so between those two ideas, I mean, this one has much more just all, kind of all vertical pieces. Mm -hmm. And that other one had that horizontal piece. Do you yes. think, and you can see, obviously you're gonna be able to see through it from the, from the ground. Do you think having all vertical like this would hide it better because the air conditioner is kind of vertical? Because I, I thought the other one looked a little too busy, like just too much detail. And I'm wondering if, but I'm wondering if that would hide the stuff behind it better or the fact that there are all these vertical pieces and the, the air conditioner is more or less vertical. In terms, of, in terms of hiding, I don't think one option would do more than the other. Okay. Personally, it looks. Yeah. yeah. Personally, we like this one because it's simpler. And although, um, you know, these windows have a similar detail top and bottom, I don't think you're really going to notice this top rail um, when it's on a roof farther back from the street than the, the main facade. Yeah, I mean, you're hoping they don't notice anything, right? They look up there, they kind of see the rail, and then they look away. Right. It's not, you know, they don't see anything, really. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And don't forget, you know, from the pictures that I've shown um, at last meeting uh, that I took from the sidewalk and from across the street at the intersection and at the, uh, the, the walkway in the commons, you, the trees obscure, pretty much obscure that view. The most exposure is where you're, when you're standing at the sidewalk at the curb uh, at the street. And, and again, only from th th this part of the sidewalk. When you're over here on this side of the sidewalk or you're across the street near the inn, you you barely see this, if at all. So that, I mean, that actually, that's, that's why we had this option put onto the elevation. This is our preferred recommendation. Yeah, well, th well this is an accurate um, reflection of this elevation of the building in reality, you'll never, no one will ever see this elevation like this uh, in real life because of the trees and the growth around it and so forth. So this is right. Um, right. And say, I, say again, because I, I wasn't sure I understood which you prefer, because there were three, because I prefer the one on the far right that has the most open design. Were you saying that you guys preferred one of the three? That that's the one that's preferred. The one, uh, the one the, the simpler design, the one that's most open. Okay, on the, the far right, that's closest to the 
the houses. Well, well that's, that's the only place it's going. I'm not sure what you mean, John. No, uh, no, there's, no but about, you, there's three different patterns. Right. Um, what I suggested was the one that's drawn right now on the roof, it has no pattern at the top rail. No, I'm saying, the, again, I'm trying to look and drive, but it seemed like the design that you had where you had Three, one in the, on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. Yes. I personally prefer the one on the far right that is the most open. It resembles most the uh, the little ornamental ironwork in, with, on the windows. The one thing I'm not wild about is that mesh. Right, but the other one that um, Ron showed is even more simple than this. It doesn't have that top vertical piece right this one here if you can see that they're actually um, uh, they're, john they're actually four uh versions and the one that's preferred is shown on top of the roof the three that you're referencing are in addition to the one that's shown on the roof the one on the roof that that's shown uh doesn't have a top rail a decorative top rail I need to get home to be able to spin through the pictures because I can only yeah. get. Yeah, we, we prefer you don't crash. <laughs> do we? I mean, I know it's uh, this is the design phase, but um, do we have any idea how much this costs? And is it something? I mean, is it is this like ten thousand or thirty thousand? Um, and is it something that we need to have done while the current contractors are on site, or can it be done? after they leave and we get another contractor come in and do this you can have it, you can I mean, have obviously it's it. easiest if it's done with the current contractors <laughs> right uh, it's not a uh, it's not going to hold up final inspections or occupancy of the building or anything like that if you if you waited it until cta is done for somebody else if this work was funded privately you could have it done by whoever it's going it's going to be the cost is going to be enough that if you were to do it within the context of this contract, you'd have to bid it out, advertise it, bid it out, and go through a formal process. Yeah, okay. Yeah, plus you would be avoiding any markups um, if you if you did this after construction finished and went directly to uh, a, an iron worker, um, somebody that does, a company that does railings, wrought iron railings, you'd be working directly with them. You wouldn't be paying any, any markups on that. And so are we considering this only if they're, it's externally funded or are we considering this as part of the building committee being funded by part of the project? Or is that still up in the air? I think it's still up in the air. And I think it's something that you could, in theory, this could be the last item, You know, finish the project, finish, and then the contingency when you're done, you look at the contingency, you look at the cost of this item, and then and then proceed accordingly, because uh, yep. this isn't this isn't driving anything related to the schedule. Um, so it's just a cost related issue. So I would I would recommend while we pursue what the cost of this would be, let the kind of project play out, finish, get any additional FF and E that you want to you know apply toward the contingency or whatever you want to do. And then when the dust settles, see if we have enough to do this without doing uh, privately funded. In, in reference to John's comment about the mesh, um, we could look at some different options for material there. It could be a perforated metal. It could be a welded wire mesh. Um, I wouldn't want to do a solid panel because it would catch wind. All right. Is that and that's that's accurate where the AC unit is? It's dead center of that structure. Th roughly. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's roughly located in, in that area. So this 
you would prefer this structure as opposed to having those thick meshes line up with the windows, you know, so there'd be three of the, although I guess you have to have the corner. Never mind. You have to have, kind of have yeah. a corner. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, I actually like this with the mesh because it gives it kind of some visual substance without being solid. You know, visually yeah. it looks, it reads solid, but it's not. And so exactly it'll let the wind go through it and, and so forth. well no i what i was referring is just putting the thicker mesh I, no, right I in know. front of wherever the ac unit is <laughs> right but right. yeah yeah okay but in truth it's this isn't this isn't going to hide the, the units it's right. going to yeah um, i mean if you if you if your eye finds its way up to that elevation you're gonna you're gonna see the wrought iron first before you see the units but it'll just temper i guess what's behind the the wrought iron, it won't remove yeah. it. And the, well, I think that's, that's our understanding too, that this is not gonna shield, it's supposed to divert your eye and lessen the impact that you'll say, oh, especially these, this is a much nicer, like, oh, isn't that attractive? And somebody will say, oh, matches this uh, over the window. So they, they won't be focusing on what's behind it. Um, mm -hmm. And exactly. Sorry, I'm not going to keep asking questions except one more. Um, no, fine, I know though. at one point we talked about, you know, sticking a tree there, or, you know, a, a, whether it's a fake tree or re real tree. Did we decide that just wasn't going to look good it, or not work or something? You know, no, putting I, like a putting like a tree in front of it. So you, you see this kind of what looks to maybe a tree up top there. I, on I the think roof? Yeah, like a small, you know, six oh. foot tree up on the roof. Oh. I, I think at one point we talked about like large, you know, planters up on the roof with with trees or something in them, so that you could just literally just plop them down. Um, and that was an informal discussion. I don't know that it actually went anywhere. Okay. Yeah, I I remember it in passing, but I don't remember it as a. If you did that though, Doug, in the winter when the when the leaves are off the trees, you'd see bare trees next to AC units. And so I don't know that it would. Yeah, it, this is true. most visually impactful during the winter when the leaves aren't on the trees. In the summer, you have to you have to look for, you have to stand in the right place and look for these units to see them. Um, so I don't but know. I think to be fair, you see them no matter what, if you're driving uh, down South Street. And that's why the commission member that has was the most vocal about this initially was upset is because there's nothing you can do to hide it from South Street. Right, that's why I thought, Doug, you meant to plant, actually plant a tree in, in the yard uh, to prevent you from seeing it as you drive you know, around. Right. Because uh, that option is, is still there. Right, uh, I think that's, that's not that, what that I was thinking, but that's well. definitely an option, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's just the one option available or uh, being shown now because that's I've I'm home but it's like I'm 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 only seeing one is that all that you've got sharing right now? Here's one. the other. Okay. So this is this is the one that's the most open. These little arcs are just steel bars. The center, what's sh shown as shaded is a solid metal plate. And then the third option, again, has a solid metal plate, but the diamonds are cut out as opposed to the arcs being cut out in the middle one. I like the very simplest one the best. And I think it's because the more ornate it gets, the more it looks exactly like the window uh, wrought iron coverings. And I thought we've been being like very careful to pay homage to the old building, but not to exactly replicate it and balancing, you know, making it look historical, but also contemporary. Um, and I think that the simplest design paired with either perforated metal or mesh or something gives it that homage, but not duplicating look that we've been trying really hard to go for. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I like that too. I agree. <laughs> and also, I think for this le this level of detail in the top rail, the cost of doing that, especially if it's these 
steel bars, yeah. it's going to add to the cost without the without much benefit because you're really not going to notice them. Um, they're not going to have the same impact visually as the the, the grates at the window right. because they're like again they're up on a roof farther back. So I think the simple the simplest option with just the flat bar on top. Um, is probably the most beneficial. How much space is there? Is there a, like a, um, a, a, a flat or, or top down image of this to show how far back it is set from the edge of the roof and then how much space you have between the barrier and those air conditioning units? Like would there still be room if we wanted to put some evergreen topiary kinds of things between the barrier and the unit? Or is it like right up against it? It's not right up against it. Um, I would assume this would be roughly a foot back from the parapet, back from the edge. Yeah. At that point, you have, I'm guessing about seven feet from this railing to the, the rooftop unit. Right. And you need about three feet of clearance to access the, the, the unit for service. Um, you, so you wouldn't have room to put plantings in front of the rail. You may be able to get some plantings behind it. The only concern I would have about putting plantings on the roof here would be maintenance. Because number one, well, depending on the planting, the weight, because if you're doing a, a tree with a tub, that's going to be, it's going to have to be sizable and it's going to be pretty heavy. Um, and then you have to, you'd have to maintain whatever living thing you put up there. It's different than the green roof because the what's being planted in the green roof is intended to have minimal maintenance. Right. It's okay. just like a wild grass. I, that yeah, there's no roofs. Not a lot of roots, so you don't need the depth and the weight of all that soil either. You don't need th that. Those pans are about four inches deep, and the uh, what's planted in them doesn't grow excessively. Okay. So, if everyone's in agreement, I'd like to show this to the uh, HDC tomorrow night at the at the committee meeting with the recommendation for this simple option that's shown on the roof already. I agree. I, I prefer yeah. the one, the, the third one on the right, but I can live mm -hmm. with the simplest one, but I can't really live with that mesh that we've got to somehow work out something else. Either some, I don't know what, um, why can't does that need to be mesh is that trying to hide something is it structural why can't it just be a simple if you're going to try to break up the diamonds a simple one in solid piece of of metal with more diamonds um what do you mean more diamonds the diamond pattern that's the wrought iron. Oh, the vert like or, these verticals? Right, or like the the little in between that has the s smaller diamond with the, the ovals on the sides. If, right. Is, is there a reason that there's mesh? Is it hiding something? Is it structural? It's, it's not hiding anything. It's not structural, but it gives it, gives it some it gives the railing some substance and gives it some sense of posts as if you, you were looking at a fence so to speak and you had you know a solid post and then rails in between um it could i think if we did something like just the the crossbars or the diamond with the ovals it would it would just be lost it would look like 
a series of, you know, let's say five foot wide panels in between the decorations. And we could find some other material for those, for that infill. I would think some either something narrower that's solid if you're wanting to give the illusion of a post, but I think that you're mixing your metaphors when you have the mesh, because to me, that's like a cheap, even though it might not be, it looks cheap and inexpensive compared to the much more labor intensive, expensive, detailed um, wrought iron in between. Okay. We, we can look at some options because there's also a possibility of doing um, a metal panel with some cutouts in it, um, custom like a like a, a you know a water jet cut plate mm -hmm. that maybe has a pattern of diamond cutouts or something. Um, can I, can, I would can, agree. Like with Beth, the less is more. Probably you don't want to add a whole lot of extra, but you know, yeah. simple, simple and clean. Yeah. It, it could be a perforated panel. I mean, they, they sell prefabricated perforated panels that either have little square holes, perforations, or they have round perforations. And those perforations you can get in a number of different sizes and patterns. Um, so instead of a mesh, um, it could be a, just a perforated metal panel. But we can look at we can look at some options to run to run past everyone. Um, we'll just open up uh, the McNichols catalog and because they're they're known for the meshes and the perforated metals and whatnot. I mean, you you could present this, Ron, and then get feedback. I I don't imagine everyone will just sign off on it in the first presentation. And so, you know, there's been some discussion about these panels. We're looking at alternatives and so forth. Yeah. And I might, I might be able to dig up, uh, you know, talk to Ken, obviously, but we may be able to come up with some uh, examples of a, like a perforated metal panel yep. to show the, the committee. I think those end posts too is what helps it look a little bit more contemporary. Again, to not feel like we're just copying what's there. So. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So we'll run this past the HDC tomorrow as an initial recommendation, um, see what feedback we get from, from them in addition to John's, and we'll report back to you. Um, the other item I wanted to run past you and this is something we're gonna to have to review with the HDC also. Um, these, we have two signs exterior that are informational. One is at the edge of the wetlands behind the building um, that will illustrate and talk about the invasive species. Um, I believe that was part of the agreement with the uh, the uh, land commission. The other is a directional sign at the near the original entrance, the west entrance to the library, with a little map and an arrow directing people to the accessible entrance at the east side. So we'd have a little site plan, picture of a site plan with a arrow leading them to the east, to the east entrance. The reason I'm bringing this up to you is this is what we originally specified, this, this sign. John, can you see this? Can you hear this? John? <laughs> I can hear. Can you see what I have on the screen? Um, 
it looks like a little wayside type panel. How? Uh, I'm looking yeah, at this from my it's phone. What's the width? It's too high. It's roughly two feet wide. And it's, and it's it, not going to say anything other than handicap entrance is around the corner, basically. Yeah, it's it would have on this plate here. Actually, it's going to look more like this one. So there's going to be a plate here with right. a site plan and arrows directing people to the handicap entrance at the east side. And then on the front plate would be an arrow to get them started. You know, go, go this way. All right. So is there a choice between the top and the bottom? There, there could be. One without but, there, there could be. The reason I'm showing it to this, this subcommittee is I believe it need, we should show it to the HDC because that directional sign will be in the front of the building facing the commons. So I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention, show you what we had originally planned. It has not been purchased yet. We don't own it. We, we received a shop drawing on it, but it has not been purchased. And I've told Steve, the contractor, not to buy it yet. Uh, because so in, it, in front of the library, the sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, John. Now, in front of the library now, I don't know, other than just in the um, above the door in the lentil, I think it says Crafts and Public Library or Public Library. But other than that, there's no other, there will no, not be any other signage on that entrance because this is considered the back door, correct? Um, there is no other signage planned aside from this sign, which would be near the stairs, roughly. It will not be on the building. It would be planted. No, but I just mean that... that that that's that the, the whole purpose is is to try to make everything the the main entrance be which we would consider the back but that's where the big new sign is going to be there'll be a sign over the door um, right and this is only a, a wayfinder to get people that may come up to that entrance to say you need to just go around for the handicapped entrance yeah it 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 Exactly. It is solely intended to let people know where the handicap accessible entrance is. Because people, ambulatory people, and you know, people that can walk up the stairs can use this west entrance. Right. It's a, it's or, a you know, if you have a stroller with kids or something, you know, you don't have to drag them up those steps. You can just walk right. around. Exactly. Um, I, go ahead, John. No, I just I'm tying in something else. So I, I'm not going off of way on a tangent. At, in some of the emails, it seems like Beth that there was potentially that we could not call the reading room. We had to call it the historic reading room. What has that been addressed? Um. Yes. So there was a donor who yep. helped to fund that room. I believe the donor, and Doug can correct me, the, the conversation with the donor was they were fine with us calling it the wheel lock reading room, so long as there was uh -huh. in the directional signage, the 3D letters over the door and like on a map of the, of the library, so long as there was a donor plaque that would name, if not the donor, the person they want to honor, um, you know, like outside of the door. So it wouldn't necessarily call like the Beth Galloway Memorial reading room but the plaque might say in honor of Beth Galloway with Wheelock reading room over the, the historic reading room entrance, which is the ramp and the steps down. Right. That's correct. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Okay, because I, I was more concerned about calling it because it was a, a misnomer to, or confusing to say historic reading room. And yeah. 
could give it yeah. a name. That's why I said Wheelock. But if they want to call it the Galloway Reading Room because they gave you fifty thousand dollars, that I would think is okay. But if they are okay with yeah. the Weed Wheelock Reading Room yeah. and funded by the Smith family, that's great too. So yeah, they, I, they, they whatever works language for them. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the donor happy. Yeah. So Ron, you, you brought up this sign. You implied like there was a reason why you, we didn't go ahead and go forward with the sign. Are you proposing something different or are you just trying to get the confirmation that this is good? Um, what I'm, I wanted to show the committee what sign had been specified. So that, because I'm tomorrow night, I want to show this to the historic district commission to get their sign off. Yep. Okay. I, I want to avoid the situations we've had in the past where items were, you know, unintentionally omitted from presentations. I don't want this thing to show up after it's put in the ground right. and have the, the HDC say, where, where did that come from? So if they're not happy with it, is there a plan B option that would be like an oval sign, kind of like the one for the library with black wood and gold lettering, like to pit so it would match and fit basically, more with the historic feel? Yeah. Basically, it would be. I would suggest doing something like this in the language of the, yeah. the exterior building sign. Right. So instead of tilting back, we might have white square posts, have this be just vertical mm -hmm. and it could still be a black oval with a little plaque uh, showing the site plan and a, a gold arrow pointing you to the sidewalk. Now, behind the building, near, let's say, the adult, uh, the patio for Hi, the yeah. program room. Hi, Gary. How are you doing? We're um, oh, good. How are you? We would still use this sign because it's not visible from the street. Yeah, that makes sense. And it fits in better with the use that we need it for. The one behind the building would is probably about the same size, about two feet wide. But what will, and I'll show you these graphics once we develop them. There are four invasive species that we need to identify, give a brief description of that will go on this plaque. So there will be a graphic with an image of each of those plants, some text underneath the image with a, a brief description of um, what the plant, you know, the name of the plant, what it is, why it's invasive. And then in larger text, a title for the sign that basically says, you know, invasive species found in your backyard or something. Um, so it's really the, the, the sign at the west entrance right. that we need, that I want to review with the HDC um, and get their feedback. So if we're okay with that, um, the last item I have is just an update on the gate in the lobby that uh, blocks off the main stair after hours. Um, I ordered the samples, the, the three form acrylic panel samples. Uh, they should be arriving at my office tomorrow. I had them sent to my office because they couldn't tell me how they were gonna ship them. So I ordered roughly 10 samples. Um, actually, I will can you all see this? Yep. Okay. So in addition to the two that I proposed last week, Beth had sent me a list. Beth had a chance to go through the, um, the website and propose some additional options. 
So this is the fossil leaf, but in a mint green. Um, let me see if I move this out of the way, you should be able to see, yeah, uh, rand, um, fossil leaf random mint. And then this is um, just a blue um, patterned vertical stripe panel. This is a really interesting one. Yeah. Good choice, Beth. We like this is called Paper Lane. And the material sandwiched between the acrylic panels is shredded um, three old three form brochures and catalogs that were shredded and put in and sandwiched in between. So this is really cool. It has some color to it. It has texture. It has interest. You can also have this custom made. I'm sorry, Beth. It's recycled. <laughs> it's recycled. If we find out the value of those catalogs, we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I talked to the three form rep the other day, and she said this can be done custom. So if the library has old documents, like a, maybe they have a Gutenberg Bible floating around someplace, <laughs> the Magna Carta, you know. Um, but if you have old copies of library pamphlets or brochures or whatever that have no value, but you have them around, they could do a custom infill. So that's something to think about. Yeah. And if you hear of any thefts about of the Gutenberg Bible from Yale's Rare Books <laughs> Library, it wasn't me. I had nothing to do with it. Uh, this is another panel. Um, it's kind of a frosted panel with some vertical striations that um, Beth felt tie into the X's that are in the wrought iron. It also ties to the twigs pattern that we have in the children's room. Uh, that's a nice one. This is actually, it's hard. I don't know if you'll be able to see this too well. I think. <laughs> yep. It's yeah, actually think. Strand, fine strands of copper wire. Yeah. If it's real copper, it's going to be real expensive. Um, oh, and then this is just a speckled pattern. And I believe there's another, yes, a speckled pattern with a green overall tint, yeah. uh, a green striation similar to the, the blue one. Oh, ignore this. These two are the ones, ignore that. And then this is the one of the um, panels I originally suggested, which is the bear, this is the bear grass. And then this is, um, oh, this is, okay, that was a lighter version of the bear grass. And then this was the other uh, fossil leaf. So all of these samples should be at my office tomorrow. Um, I will bring them with me when I come up Tuesday for the meeting and get them to you uh, on Tuesday, Beth. Is that okay? Yeah. Great. Um, so I, as I mentioned, I talked to the three form manufacturers rep, told her what we were doing, the size of the, the rough size of the panels. Um, I explained we have two options, uh, one with two vertical panels and one with four almost square panels, gave her the rough dimensions and asked her to recommend a minimum thickness. And she said that quarter inch should probably be the thinnest we go, even though these aren't very big. Um, so that's great. That's fine. Um, she also recommended how much, these are going to be set in between glass stops. 
much like a window or a door. Yeah, you know, the glass doors have a uh, like a, a wood stop around the edge to hold the glass panel in. These will have the same thing. And she recommended that the glass stops cover at least a half an, an inch of the edge all the way around. Um, aside from that, she saw no other issues that we should consider or be concerned about. Um, quarter inch minimum thickness and half inch minimum coverage with the stops around the edge. So as soon as those samples come in, I'm following up with our hardware consultant. Um, the hardware that was originally specified by the consultant was for a thicker door, a two and a quarter inch door. I'm recommending a one and three quarter inch door, which is the thickness of your typical door. Um, so I'm running that past the hardware consultant to see if he recommends different hinges. The other thing I'm going to ask the consultant to look for is there's a crash bar on this gate and it has to be at a certain height, which is roughly 39, 41 inches above the floor. So what I'm gonna ask is if there is a, uh, a paddle version available for the crash bar that we could use. Rather than a, you know, a, a bar that goes all the way across, a paddle would be like a vertical box. Uh, have you ever seen those, um, like the emergency exits that have a, a paddle that has a sign that says, if you push this paddle, the alarm's gonna go off. But that paddle is not attached to the door behind it. It's attached to the lock set. Um, so I'm going to see if they have something like that that we can use instead of a full crash bar. It will the, need to, go ahead. But the paddle is obviously on the uphill side because right. it's to push. So when you spin it around against the outside wall, that's the part you're going to see. Unfortunately, yes. So almost it almost seems like the the the, bird, the horizontal push bar going all the way across the room might actually look nicer. I don't know, a little more symmet symmetric. Well, it wouldn't go all the way across the room. It would uh, It would maybe door, yeah. 24 or 30 inches okay. wide. Okay. The thing is, if, if we use the crash bar, it would cover one of those panels. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Had we settled yep. on two panels versus four panels, and if you had to have a vertical bar, even on half of it, couldn't you just make the panels, even if they're asymmetrical, so, so that the, what do you call it, the glass stops? like lines up with the, the horizontal bar in the back? Because it's going to think through Riken's glass. It, yeah. yeah. I was thinking about that, and I haven't had a chance to, to draw it up because I need to um, uh, I need to figure out exactly where that bar would fall on the, yeah, I know the, I know the height it needs to be at. I just need to draw it and see how much space I have left above it to see if I can fit in the frame of the door and a glass panel. Or well, a, can a, it be like three sections instead of two? I mean, can't you play around with? Yes. Or, or a big one at the bottom and a smaller one in the middle and a bigger one at the bottom, you know, whatever it takes to kind of make the yes. panic bar have a, a wooden home or a a style, whatever you want to call it, to yes, exactly to land on. Exactly, that's what I'm going to be looking at. But yeah, just yeah. just in case, I was going to ask the rep to to come up with a, see if we can come up with the paddle version that may be less obtrusive, if and that way, uh, I would you the this committee would have the choice of do you do you like it this way or do you like it that way right. if i'm not making the decision for you i'm looking into options all right 
So should we plan on meeting again next Wednesday? Oh, well, I have a board of trustees. We have a board of trustees meeting at seven. So a little earlier would be better. And then I'm taking a class, I think, Tuesday night. So. Um, yeah. Thursday night. I can't meet in person. Do we want to look in person at, at sample? Well, I was going to bring the samples to you on Tuesday. Okay. Does anyone else want to look at the samples? Well, I, I could go I on Tuesday to look, but I, I'm going to be in Texas next weekend, starting Thursday. Monday? Can we do Monday the twenty? Is that the twenty fourth? I mean, two two of the issues are historic, so we're just waiting for direction from them. But this panel, we just need to get eyes on it, you know, from different people. So maybe if you brought the samples to the site next week, Ron, and then during the course of the week, people could look at them and pick their top three or whatever mm -hmm. and then we can go from there okay maybe meet the following week yeah okay um because what i can do uh and for next tuesday when i bring up the samples and that way beth will have them at the library and people can go right and go see them at the library but simultaneously i will email this committee um, some elevations of that gate as John and Beth described, you know, play around with the panel sizes to see how we can work that crash bar into it. Um, and then I will have feedback, uh, you know, we'll, we'll fill you in on tomorrow night's meeting with the historic district regarding the uh, screen the roof screen and the sign out front. We'll uh, I'll let you know what feedback we get on those two items from HDC. And I think that wraps it up. Um, well, I have something. I don't know if this is the right meeting or if it needs to be the full meeting. Um, is the fact that Beth says now that the way to measures there's been a change in the plan and it's not gonna fit. But I only found that out because historic district was, or historical commission was planning to move it. And Andy gave us a date and then Beth said, nope, it's, there's no longer any room for it. So I don't know if that's the full committee that needs to discuss that. So it, it's not that it doesn't fit the space. It's that we actually do not have enough storage on site for the entire library's collection. and. I did dig up the minutes um, from the meeting where we discussed it, where I said that it was out of scope, but I would get back to you. Um, I brought it to Board of Trustees, not for a vote, vote, but just to say, this is what we're thinking. And we could make it work if we move the self-check. There's an electrical outlet and an alcove. Um, we didn't have any vote on it with the board or with the full committee or with the interiors committee. And John, when you told me that the weights and measures cabinet was restored and sitting at the municipal center, I said, great, then you have a home for it. No, I, that's not, no, and that's, you that's, not that's, that's, what, that's no. what you said. I am trying to be nice, but as I'm finding that people are doing things that weren't agreed to, I'm not being as nice. That's not what was agreed upon. When the selectmen agreed to have this restored, the intent, what the circle commission told them was it was going to go on the new library. And that's what the discussion has been all along. And all of a sudden, when it's time that we're really literally making plans to move it, that it's like, oh no, there's no longer room for it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if there's space in 50 buildings. This building belongs to the town of Grafton. It is not gonna be a part of your collection. It's something that's that- problem. <laughs> it's, it's not scope for the library's collection at all. It's not a museum. Okay, but, a but, but your library is owned by the town. And if the town said you have to put a truck in the front, you wouldn't have a choice if that's what the town so said. The Board of Trustees Actually, has jurisdiction over the building, John. Yeah, so that I building is under- meeting for a vote, if you'd like. I, do we have, I don't know. I think, you, I think you do need to have a, a meeting with the Historical Commission and a meeting with your board because this whole project has gone along like this and I've been telling them all along, yes, there's space, yes, there's space, that's, it's, that's good. what's going to happen. This was measured and designed and there's an outlet. 
And then, nope, that's not the plan. Yeah, I mean, that seems beyond the scope of this group here. <laughs> um, well, that's do we, what have, I said, a, do we have a picture of this like that someone can distribute? Because I'm not really sure what this is that we're talking about. I mean, not, not right now, but just sometime. It's like a, a wooden box that's been restored with glass in the front now covering. But there, it's like an old scale. Literally, it's an old scale that all the towns, anything like that a, was related. Like a microwave or a refrigerator? Oh, um, two refrigerators. Huge. Two refrigerators. Yeah. Yes, but it fits in this little niche that was designed for it no. with the outlet to no. plug in the no. lights. John, that ne I have the original plans from 2019. That niche was intended to hold a self-check because it is right across like the hallway from the circulation desk. And I agreed to move that to see if it would fit. And now it turns out I have no place to store library of things. And we also did not account for the public hold shelf. So well, I, I would just say okay, that well, regardless, it doesn't seem like that's part that of this interior. That nothing works. Right. So the, I, the public, the, there needs to be a further discussion of this okay. somewhere. Yeah, it seems like the larger building committee would be the, and, and then of course the trustees at some point too because the trustees have, the library have building. correct yeah 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 and they weren't opposed to it when i thought we could give up the space but as it turns up we really cannot give up the space if you want to have another conversation how can we have how many hundred thousand feet and there's not space for whatever you're saying i just find me a single closet in that building there's no closets to store anything Okay, because I'm not the architect. I didn't design it and I didn't tell them we needed a closet. So, and there's the, yeah, this is not the place. And I've got finance committee that I've got to attend. So, yeah, but if someone could send me a so picture, a specific... um, I'd love to see the, see the picture of this thing. Uh, I will go by tomorrow after work and take a picture of it if I can get in the building and, and send it. It's where is it in? It's in the municipal building? It's, it's in the, the kind of where the, um, food bank food is um right when you go in the front so it's the, accessible kind of i could go in the, and see it oh yeah. yeah okay i can take care i can do that john thanks but i don't have a problem taking a picture either because everybody might want to see that's true yep okay um and i wanted um, to bring up counter heights in the building specifically in the teen space and now i've discovered that the adult computer counter heights are stool height. Um, and I was told that every space within the building was seated counter height except for the staff room, which has a really tall counter. Um, but these are not accessible. And I don't feel that just simply ordering stools is an appropriate response to this error when we have like been pushing how accessible the building is. Actually, for the duration of the project. Actually, that they're at 34 inches high, which is within the ADA accessible heights. They give ADA gives us a, a range of height from 29 to 34 inches. Counter height is 36 to 42 inches. So somebody sitting in a regular old wheelchair can wheel up to it and use it, is what you're telling me. That's not, the reason. Not, that's the range and that's the code, but it actually will work for our patrons. In real if, it, if it didn't work, it wouldn't be part of the ADA code. The reason being is so the wheelchair arms can fit under the apron of the, of the counter. I, I have to jump off because I've got to go to this other meeting. When is the next meeting so I can get it posted? In two weeks. Two but weeks. Do we have a, what, what day of the that's week? That's the second. I have another commitment on that night. I can't meet. Oh. Well, I mean, okay. I, okay. Somebody just can somebody text me because I yeah. really um, yeah. they've already started without. We'll me, figure so. it out, John. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. So I understand that the arms have to roll underneath, but I'm concerned. I guess about so again somebody sitting in a seat in a wheelchair. I don't know what the the height of the wheelchair seat is is it going to be up high enough that they are not typing like this at those spaces it's not it shouldn't be too high um it, it meets it's part of the ada yeah. 
code and recommendations. And are we referring to that that one strip in the adult room? That's where all the computers are going to be, or are there multiple places? It's 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 that spot. So there, there's a laptop counter that I thought was okay, but I haven't been back in to actually look at that. Um, then there's desktops. There's supposed to be four desktops and five chairs, and it's right like outside of the ten feet meeting room. Yep. And then in the YA maker space, there's also a counter that's high that faces a window that looks into the gaming room. Right. Yeah. Yep. Now okay. that one is at 42 inches. Why? Because it we needed it to coordinate with the window and with the um, the side counter. We felt that if people were sitting at that, and we and for that one we did order stools. Yeah, we because because when I walked in and went, this is the wrong height. The response was, too bad, we can't change it. Too bad for the kid in a wheelchair who wants to come in and sit with her friends at the makerspace counter. So now we have to have a separate piece of furniture and she will be ostracized. Like I know this kid personally. She'll now be ostracized from her peers because she can't be at the wheelchair height counter. We can we can add a wheelchair height in that space right next to the um, that counter we, near the near the front window and the counter, we can add a wheelchair height counter there. Okay, I would, I would like to test these with a real wheelchair though. So I, one of the, one of the okay. things that happened with our 2013 renovation, which you were not part of Ron, okay. um, was that we had a pathway design with um, a ramp going from the parking lot to this new accessible door. And it did not line up with the concrete patches or the door. So you would literally have to roll off of the path wheel to the door, go back off of the brick pathway to the lawn, get the door open, and then somehow maneuver your chair into the door, into through the doorway. And when I brought it to the attention of the architect, what I heard was it was designed that way and it's up to code. And we said, okay, but it only works with a skinny, lightweight, portable folding wheelchair. It doesn't work for a motorized wheelchair. The door doesn't open far enough. I hear you that it's up to code, but if we can't use it and our patrons can't get in the building, it doesn't work. So before we sign off completely on the project, I, I really would like it tested with people in wheelchairs that yes, these counter heights will work, not just that's the code, so it must be okay. Because my experience has been, it doesn't matter what the code says. Whatever you said, 29 to 34, there's a yeah. range because of the different body types. Um, so that's my only concern would be, you get in there, someone that has a short body height, it might not work well, but you get someone that has a long body height and it works great. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, we should see if we can test it with a real life situation. Go ahead. Yes, by all means, go ahead and test it. See if you're if you're sat if you're comfortable with it, and we can we can work from there. All right, and definitely if we if we can add another trunk to the counter in the makerspace. I mean, yes. of course, then the, it won't be even, right? Like it's really nicely centered. I think on the wall and the window, but I still think that that is better than. Sorry, kid, you have to sit at this um, adjustable height lectern that we got on a laptop that we will try to connect to the 3D printer. And yeah, like, no, can, can notice, honest, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, uh, actually, Ken did notice that when we did our walkthrough last week. When, he, when we went into the makerspace, the team makerspace, he did notice that area and said, you know, we can put an ADA height um, section of counter there. And if you have to do both sides to balance it, like that would be okay too. Okay. And, and we can um, potentially play with the width of that 42 inch height counter. I'd have to see how it's done structurally, but it may be that if we can get a double wide at, at um, wheelchair height so that the person can sit with a companion. So we, we might need to cut some of that 42 inch high counter short, but let me let Ken and I will look at it and, and see what, what we can come up with. Historical Commission pissed off at me, so I don't want to add Disability Commission to that. <laughs>
Okay, we promise not to put any more targets on your back. <laughs> I'm wondering, Ed, is you know how you get a uh, like on a on a when you retrofit a, a counter or a desk and you can get the drop the kind of the drop down for your keyboard or laptop so it's it's under mounted, but it it drops out. Do you know do you know what I mean? So you could have if the counter type top is physically borderline too high, but it has a drop down pull out for that's that's usually in a recessed position. But if somebody in a wheelchair, they can go up, drop it out, and then then they can use More that tread. space. Yeah, without without having to change anything. Yeah. Um, I'd have to I'd have to look at some keyboard trays. I mean, I've I've spec'd a ton of those things in my past life. Yeah. Um, I'd have to check to see if it goes low enough from a 42 inch high counter right. to get down to the right. The only concern I would have about that is that the keyboard and mouse would be at the correct height, but now the monitor is right. yeah, yeah. up here. It could, if you're not comfortable with the height at the computer counter, keyboard trays would be an option there. I was thinking if that if that's really for, are there, are there gonna be, um, the one in the hallway um, that's in the background that uh, Doug's behind Doug's uh, is yeah. that, are there going to be monitors there or is it for people with laptops to put? No, it's, it, it's for desktop computers and the, yeah, the, okay. the point of it was people who aren't comfortable with a laptop, generally elderly population will want to sit down and use a traditional large you know, full-size okay. full keyboard, full-size monitor, so we're going to get four um, and I, like I said, I just can't picture them if it's that same population, then like clamoring up right, on right. The cafe chairs and not being able to put their feet stably on the floor and okay. okay. 